I learned about this project at Aishi in Baltimore in October. Uh, my first visit to Aishi, I was really impressed. Um, and Baltimore is very nice as well. Um, so I heard about this project. I thought it'd be really interesting for my customers and anyone else who's involved with campus operations or campus sustainability to hear about it. So could you introduce yourself, please? And, and we'll take it from there. I'm Mary Wallace, and I'm the co-founder of People Tells. And I'm Joni Newcomer. I'm the manager of environmental policy and sustainability at New Mexico State University. So can you tell us about the project? Start, start big picture and then start to drill down into detail. So start with sort of the biggest picture you can think and, and come down. Our um, goal at People Tells was really to eliminate paper towel use um, throughout the United States and in other countries. And it's because in the U.S. alone, we throw away 18 billion pounds of paper towels into the landfill. And there is a significant, both financial, but I think more importantly, environmental impact of using paper towels. It's not only the waste that's created, and you have to find places to dispose of that waste, and um, also there's the trees that are cut down, there's the water that's polluted in the process of making the paper towels, and also the CO2 emissions that are created by the process of making uh, the, the paper from the pulp. So that's, you know, that's the big picture. You know, our, 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 our sort of vision is that someday that we can do this because it's really a, a mindless habit. Um, here, people buy, you know, I, I, I go to Costco, which is, you know, one of our big warehousing, warehouse uh, stores, and people are coming out of there with carts and carts of paper towels, and, and people will take a dozen of them to wipe up a little still, <laughs> whereas, you know, you can use a paper towel, you can use, you know, uh, an old rag to do the same thing and then just reuse it. So, ideally, that's, you know, our vision, our goal. And um, sort of kind of bring that down to the individual user. Each person on average uses 3,000 paper towels outside the home um, mm -hmm. every year. So that doesn't even count what's going on at home, which probably is, you know, double or triple that amount. So we looked at it as, you know, every person can make a difference and a small impact can add up, or, you know, a small act can add up to a really big impact. And we started um, working with colleges because we thought that, one, it's, it's uh, you know, a mindset in colleges to make change on many campuses and there is a movement uh, towards zero waste on a lot of campuses. So, uh, that's why we started working with um, schools like University or New Mexico State University with Joni and um, others to see if we couldn't make an impact on people's behavior and make change. Mm. So what is the what is the service? You define the pain points. What's the service that you're delivering? Or what's the initiative? Well, um, in working with the colleges, we did a study, and the study was about really changing behavior. So we, we built an app that would uh, track people's paper towel use, and we worked with nine campuses across the country, and what we were, uh, wanted to do was to see if we could change behavior and how long it would take. So we measured the number of paper towels that, that students used prior to the study, and then we continued to track their paper towel use over a five-week period. And we were able to, on average, decrease the number of paper towels used over that period of time by 80%. Yay. So we know we can make a difference. <laughs> Okay, so th is this, uh, I'll bring you in, Joni, is, is this to do with the, the person becoming aware of how many paper towels they're using or what other things are at play here? 
I became involved with Mary because I got my first people towel at an AC conference probably six years ago. And so I personally have a very low waist. Um, and so I take it very personally. And so when I found the opportunity to get involved with the, with the research study, I was all for it because I, as the sustainability manager at New Mexico State, energy reduction is my first initiative and waste reduction is my second initiative. So those are my top two. So that's why this was so important for me to become involved and to help the students learn more about waste reduction and see how they live life with the people towel. <laughs> yeah, and it was very successful. It really is. In fact, I still have students calling me and asking me for people towels and where they get them. And so it's all the rage here on campus. So you mentioned about energy use. Um, just, just in case anyone's not making the connection, where is the energy reduction happening? Well, that's separate from the waste reduction. Those are just my two top yeah. initiatives on campus mainly because when we signed the um, ACU PCC, the President's Climate Commitment, we said we would reduce our energy, and also we said we would reduce our waste. So that's, that was a promise we made. So is that to do with uh, replacing hand dryers? Or, or, uh, or not? It, or, or, am I getting to no, it? you can't. In this case, I can't relate the energy reduction to the yeah. waste reduction. Right. I mean, right. you could if I was a giant factory and making these. Yeah. But in my instance, no, they don't really relate. Okay. So um, just pull this together. So there's a, there's a, a reusable towel. Is that, is, that what we're, is that what we're getting to? Is that what people towels is? Yes. And yeah, I'm sure you'll have a bunch of pictures of it. But here's <laughs> mine that I just pulled out of my purse that I carry with me yeah. all day long everywhere. <laughs> Okay, okay, so Jody, I pulled mine out of my purse now. Okay, show there you go. Oh, this is one great. of my favorites. You can see it's well used. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, so, just, so I'm just summarizing here. These reusable towels um, are carried by the by the by the by the the customer, and instead of taking a paper towel, they use the the um, the, the people towel, give it a little shake off in the restroom, and goes back into the handbag or the pocket to be reused again and again and again. And it's probably washed at the end of the week or after a couple of days or something like that. That's right. Great. Yes. Great. So this seems like a no-brainer. Why haven't I seen it before? <laughs> <laughs> well, you Brits, you know, you're a little behind us here in the U.S. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, Take no. that off. No, no so is it a, <laughs> we've mentioned culture here. Is, is this a cultural thing? Have you seen it in practice anywhere else? How does it go down there? Well, uh, talked about it in Japan, right? Everywhere. Yes. Everyone um, uses a personal hand towel in Japan. Uh, because if you, if you visit there and you go into a restroom in any one of the cities, you'll see very few hand dryers or, and no paper towels. Uh, you might find in the bigger department stores some hand dryers, but other than that, everybody just carries their own. And, you know, from the time that a person is, you know, a child old enough to dry their own hands, they carry their own towel with them. And until that point, their parents carry an extra towel, and that's the children's towel. So it's, you know, the culture grows up with it. And I if, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, sorry, I, was, I, I don't want to interrupt, but... Um, I wonder if some, we've lost our way a little bit, obviously, because I remember having like a handkerchief when I was a youngster, <laughs> you know, and I can't remember, that was to kind of like, if you had a cold or whatever, and I don't know whether, there's obviously a hygiene issue, isn't there, where people have gone, right, that's unhygienic, let's jump the paper towels, so, but Japan or Japanese are traditionally very hygienic. Um, yes. So, what's happened? Well, we, I mean, we get that question a lot mm -hmm. from potential users and for one thing with the people towel this towel you have your own personal towel and you are expected to use it when your hands are clean so you wash your hands they should be germ free and then you dry them with it so and you don't share it with somebody else and i don't know about in the um, UK, but 
in the U.S., we'd become such germaphobes. <laughs> I mean, it's really crazy. Uh, because a good hand washing is really the best, um, you know, defense against viruses and bacteria and other germs. And um, so, I mean, that's our answer to that. Hand dryers, we get asked about that a lot. You know, they're, they're big energy consumers. They're noisy. And there's been quite a bit of research, and I certainly can send you uh, links to the research we have, but about hand dryers uh, really breeding um, germs and then spraying them all over the bathroom. I wondered about the, you know, the ones that they do now, it's the blade hand dryer. I was, <laughs> hands in wet where's that water going it's just going to the bottom of that reservoir of everyone else's kind of like shakes yes so to, yep. uh, Joni, what about for just coming back to the campus operational side of things <coughs> how was this how has it rolled out across your campus and what has been the challenges and um, how did you overcome them so far i have not been able to roll out people towels as an option to paper towels we just <coughs> finished getting a green cleaning policy on campus where we're using recycled paper for our paper towels and recycled paper for our toilet paper. So that was a big step for us. Mm. So I think the next step, now that people understand the importance of waste reduction and reuse, um, I think that the people towel would be a good next step to talk to our custodians about. Because as Mary can show in her study, it is hugely successful mm -hmm. and saves the university so much money yeah i can't imagine our custodians not wanting to do it i just need to approach them this is great this, is, this has been the most interesting last <laughs> 20 minutes of my day so far because <laughs> this has got so many parallels with the, the bag for life movement do you have that in the u.s where you know you've got your bag for life and you keep that and that's you know now that that is over the last 10 years since I've been involved with the race reduction, that has gone from niche um, activity to mainstream. And now when we, look, when we go shopping now, my wife's always like, oh, you forgot the bags for life, you know? And <laughs> it's like, it's a normal thing. So I can see this doing the same trajectory. Mm -hmm. And you know, they can be branded, they can be part of a campaign. Yeah. It's, yes. it's, it's tailor-made for, tailor for campuses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and Daniel, this is crazy, but I will talk to any stranger in a public restroom about my people towel. If I'm using this to dry my hands, I will talk to anyone. Of course, they think I'm some crazy lady, but I show my people towel to everyone. And yeah. some people think that's really cool, and some people really do think I'm crazy. But um, So that's how passionate I am about it. Great. But is this an absorbent material, or is it like, what, what describe the material? Yes, Mary, talk about your towel. The, the towels are made from 100% fair trade organic cotton. And we had the um, cotton woven specifically for this purpose. So on one side, it's a smooth surface, so you can print on that. But then on the other side, it's a very lightweight terry, which is very absorbent, yet it dries quickly. Okay, this is good. So from, I'm going back to operational stuff again. So comparison-wise for capital layout, um, what does it look like from hand dryer to paper towel to people towel? What, what's the sort of comparisons investment-wise? Investment for a campus? Let's look at a campus's um, paper towel use over one year, you know, where you've, you've got, I don't know, you said 3,000 paper towel users by each person per year compared to the actual cost of a, of a people tell you well, depending, um, depending on the size of the campus, um, you know, they would need to have, you know, a certain number of people tells in order to, for students to actually adopt the habit. Mm -hmm. now, we haven't done a direct comparison. I don't know if Joni has any of this information uh, as far as the cost, but we do know instead of using paper towels and switching to people towels, a campus will uh, see a return on their investment in a little less than three months. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a big difference um, with the, the cost of paper towels, the cost of the janitorial service to remove them, the landfill, 
all of those components of the overall class. Mm. And the beauty of the people tell is students and faculty or whoever is using them, they take personal responsibility in laundering their tell. Mm. So there's not a cost uh, in that regard to the campus either. I love it. From a campus point of view, Joni, um, what do you see the barriers to adopting this? You mentioned it took a long time for you to get your green cleaning policy in place. And that's just normal. You know, these organizations are bureaucratic. There's committees. There's a few processes that we know that. But what, I mean, because I'm thinking about being a janitor here. And I'm thinking about the janitor filling these, filling these um, box of paper towels. And then all of a sudden, he's going, well, I don't need to do that anymore. I can spend my time doing more meaningful things. I can clean deeper. I can do. I can serve my customers better. So. I can see a benefit for the porter or the janitor or whatever you want to call them. But then there's obviously the, his, his or her boss who's laying out for paper towels. They're going to see a return investment in three months' time. So I'm trying to find where's, where's the barriers coming from? <laughs> you know, the barriers are because people are not, they don't like change. I mean, that's, that's really the easiest answer is people don't like change. And so... Everything you said is spot on. It really is. Because right now, New Mexico State University is going through huge budget cuts. Huge. Our custodians are up to the gills in too much to do. And if we took one thing off their list, which is emptying the trash, which is a big deal, and yeah. then we reduced yeah. our tipping fees for that trash, yeah. I can't imagine that the custodian manager would say, oh, well, that's silly. He'd go, oh, look, a way to save money. Yeah. So, so it's just a matter of my approaching him and, you know, Mary, maybe this will be a reason for you and me to do a conference call with the head of custodians. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, think, we, maybe this is our next step, Daniel. <laughs> I mean, whenever I'm in a restroom or a toilet that you call them over here um, and I see that bin, that, that dumpster, that container full of <laughs> um, half wet paper towels, which mm -hmm. have a volume when the you know the, the, the overflow in the bin, but if you squash them together, like the volume is only that. I just right. see, the system is broken. Yes, you know, the system's broken. We're, go we're growing these trees in Indonesia. We're we're chopping them down. We're moving them all the way over to Europe. Packed with paper towels. We're putting them through a factory. We're bleaching them. We're coloring them. We're mm -hmm. sending them to campuses all across the world. They're used for ten seconds and then thrown in the bin. <laughs> then collected. They're not even recycled because they're hard to recycle because they're wet and the, the textiles and the, the materials it can't be recycled. And it goes straight to landfill, wet, yeah. rots, to give off methane. In a hundred years' time, we're going to have some archaeologists going to the landfill site and going, what, they use paper towel? They use uh, paper, paper towel? It's bonkers when you could just do a textile version and use it once. Uh, use it a yes. hundred times instead of once. And just toss it in the wash. Yeah, reuse yeah. It's Crazy. so easy. Crazy. Gosh, it's so easy. It's hard. I mean, it's really difficult um, for me to understand why it just isn't a no-brainer for people. Wow. Um, I love this. Um, so how can I help? How, how could I help um, in the UK? Any, anything I can do to help? Well, I think help is spread the word. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to send you some samples. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, you know, of our designs. Um, and and use it, love it, you know? Because <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, from just our conversation with first meeting you, I think that you would absolutely love it. And you, you, you get the concept, you mm -hmm. had a handkerchief. Um, I'd love to see people go back to using handkerchiefs. <laughs> yeah, I can, I, I'm just for their nose. <laughs> yeah, for their nose, no, absolutely. But I mean, I have to admit, I have used this for my nose. <laughs> Twice in the wash, but you know, I have emergencies sometimes, you know, and, and I don't have a Kleenex or I spill something in my car. Um, I grab my people towel. I mean, it's very versatile. I guess I should say that too. I don't, you know, sometimes I use a napkin, you know, to wipe my mouth. I mean, I, I don't then dry my hands with it. I toss in the wash and get a clean one. But um, it's, it's, Really, a very useful little thing. This is a no-brainer. No-brainer of alert. No-brainer of alert. Um, <laughs> I don't want to take you much long, but longer. But is there anything you would like to say before we leave, both of you? Is it, think about like how people can adopt this on their campus, or any top tips or advice you have for uh, changing governance or policy, or just anything to help um, get your message out there. 
Well, I think from um, people tell's perspective, I think that people need to realize that it's going to take um, a little while to adopt a new behavior. And it's okay to forget your towel. And we've seen this in, in a study that we did. People, you know, had the best intentions, but they left it at home. So their people, paper towel usage increased for the day. But over the period of time, they eventually, you know, did little things. They put it by the front door. They made sure it was in their purse, whatever. And I also say that one people towel per person just doesn't do it. We learned that from our study. You know, if you're going to truly adopt the habit, you need a week's worth. You're right, yes. three at a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, because you can use it for a few days, but as I mentioned earlier, if I have, you know, I spill my coffee on me or whatever on the way to, <laughs> you know, a meeting, uh, I'm going to use my people towel to sop it up, and then I got to find, you know, get a new one. But really, three to five, you know, I say the more the better. I, we have moms that have bought dozens of these; they carry them in their car. They have them at home, they have them in a purse, the diaper bag, you name it. Um, and they're truly living the sustainable lifestyle. It's really great. Awesome, yeah. thank you. How about, how about you, Johnny? Well, one of the things that I'm very proud of personally is that I am zero waste, particularly when I travel. And so I've made my own little travel to go box and my travel zero waste box. So when I travel or just really in my everyday living, I have my to go clamshell for leftovers. I have my people towel always. I have my little spork. Um, I have my to go cup. You know, I just don't throw things away. And like Mary said, I have, well, I'm embarrassed to say how many of these I have now <laughs> because the designs are so pretty and I love them. Um, and they're great gifts. So I give them to people who will use them and spread the word. And I just can't think of anything bad about it. I love my people towel. Awesome. And what about any advice for other sustainability people from campus who are watching this now? Any advice about from your journey? Well, I would start with, if there is a sustainability manager on campus, certainly get the people towels to that person and maybe they watch this video or, you know, they're always welcome to give us a call and we can explain how easy it is and the benefits. And then from there, I think it's important to start from the top. And so right now we are doing the STARS, a sustainability report. Well, it's an ACE report that you attended the conference. And one of the things is on waste reduction. And so I'm guessing campuses all over the world are doing some kind of sustainability report. And this is an easy credit. So that's one reason to use it. And just to be conscious humans, right? To take yeah. care of the planet. It's what we have to do. Yeah. And you get that, Daniel. You get that so clearly. So you can be our UK mouse. <laughs> well, what, one of my bits of advice also for anyone that's on campus trying to make a difference in this regard is to make sure to look at all of the costs and all of the benefits. Yeah. I recently worked with a, a campus that was looking at giving people towels away to all of their incoming freshmen. Mm -hmm. And they had close to 7,000 incoming freshmen. Well, they, they wanted to do it, the sustainability team wanted to do it, but they ran into a brick wall when they got to the funding agency <laughs> because they could buy paper towels so less, you know, so much ch cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, please go back to them or have them call me and let's talk about all of the expenses yes. and all of the benefits <laughs> yes. because it, Not you just, just stick. I mean, sure, you know, one, you can, you know, buy paper towels a lot, a lot cheaper. But over the long run, it's not going to be less expensive. Out of the gate, yes, you're going to pay more for a paper towel in the first month than you are for paper towels. But give us three months and you're all of a sudden going in the other direction. Yep. Awesome, great stuff.